Lord, thank you again for your kindness, for your goodness, for your mercy. We ask you for wisdom tonight. We just want to talk about the risen Christ and the, and the finished work on the cross. And we want people to be healed and whole and saved and understand the power of Jesus Christ in the finished work. So thank you tonight for your anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. And welcome back to Roundtable. Uh, I, don't, I think this is number six overall. And it's the first one of 2015. Sorry. Um, yeah, Life. just sorry. <laughs> yeah, Life. stuff happens. And uh, anyway, we're here and uh, hope you're having a great year so far. And this week, if you if you tuned in during the prayer, if you heard that, um, th this week is the run up to Passover, uh, Resurrection Sunday or Easter, as we called it when we were growing up. And um, we are going to have this ready for Easter. So if you're watching it, you're probably watching it right about then. And it's an important time. I mean, yes. from the time I was a kid up, um, Easter was a big Sunday. Yes. And Pentecost. Yes. Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. That was the big days. And, uh, yeah, we dabbled in some eggs. Yeah. <laughs> and we bit, and, and we, we bit some ears off some chocolate bunnies and, and other things. Uh, and we had our share of peeps. Yeah. <laughs> Jelly beans. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we did that. All that pagan stuff. Woo! <laughs> But it is about the Passover, which yes. was uh, instituted in De uh, Exodus, where you see children of Israel being delivered out of bondage after 430 years of not bondage, but 430 years of being in the Egypt, which started with Joseph when he came to Egypt. And then the, all the rest of the family followed, and then they multiplied. And then another Pharaoh came mm -hmm. who didn't know Joseph, mm -hmm. didn't remember all the good he'd done. So they began to uh, persecute the Jews and then enslave them. So probably for at least a couple hundred, maybe 300 years, they had been oppressed and their goods confiscated and forced labor and they become accustomed to it. But one of those wonderful things happened. You, be, you begin to, to read it in the beginning of Exodus where it says, and the children of Israel groaned in their service and groaned under yes, their labor yes. and God heard them. God heard them. Yes. Is there another place in the Bible that the word groan, as in G R O well, A N? It talks about the the all of nature, all the whole earth groans for the <clears throat> manifestation of the sons of God. And that's a, a, a that's a heartfelt call. Right. And a prayer. And what else? There's one other place that I know. Was it? Did Jesus groan on the cross? He he groaned. I think it was as to Lazarus. Yeah, mm -hmm. but there's also it talks about the Holy Spirit there you go. when we pray with groanings that we can't utter or, or yeah. don't even know what we're saying. That the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Right, and we Pentecostals, I, we grew up Pentecostal, <laughs> and uh, we not only grew up Pentecostal, we, we still are. are. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, uh, the groanings we would we were heard often that that was you know speaking in tongues or or things like that. Mm -hmm. But I believe more and more that particular thing is this groaning, mm -hmm. where you don't have words anymore. Yeah, yeah, You're like, yeah. like some of the stuff yeah. all of us have been through recently, some of the things that just you're going, yes. I, yes. I don't, God, I don't know what to say. Yes. I don't know how to pray. It's just like, oh, yes. frustration and pain and just like the burden. And it's like, God hears that. Yes, he does. Yes, God he hears does. the groans and the cries of his children. It's a prayer. Yeah. And takes it serious. Yes. So that had happened with the children of Israel, and we won't get into 400 years. It took you that long. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you get comfortable with certain situations, and you can manage them, yeah. and you begin yeah. to yeah. get so far down the line, you don't realize that you're in captivity, really. Yeah. Because, well, your generation has been four generations. I didn't, I didn't know that time back then. Right. I didn't know freedom. Right. Yeah. And so it, it, things started getting rough, and... Um, then they groaned out, and God provided a deliverer. They came out. Then there was that night, the final tenth uh, plague or thing yes. that God did to say, hey, one more chance, Pharaoh. Let my people go. Let them go. Let them go. So the institution of the Passover was about what? Let my people go. Yes. 
And the death angel passing over. Right. Yeah. So, so you see this pattern we're starting to set up from the very beginning. You've got to understand what's going on here. This is not about spilling blood. Mm -hmm. It involves that. Right. And it's not about a death angel passing over. It involves that. Right. And it's not about people enslaved. It's a, it's, it, yes. it involves that. that. But what's it about? It's about those people being set free yeah. by yes. a loving God. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Set yes. free is the theme you're going to see from, from Genesis on. We, mm -hmm. we, we've discussed about Adam and Eve mm -hmm. and their sin and what happened. Okay. Instead of suffering the consequence of death that should have happened, yeah. Yeah. in the day you eat of it, yeah. you shall die. Yeah. 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 Now there's whole other stuff that's going on here, but they didn't die. Yeah. I mean, death started, yes. but they yes. didn't die. Right. And there's a whole other thing for that. But what happened in that garden that prevented them? God killed animals and smeared them in blood. Because it says in Hebrews, there's no remission of sins without the shedding of blood. He used so, the skins to cover. Yes, and he used yes, those skins. Yes, and, and it was yes. the first time mm -hmm. that the animals had been killed mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. From the very beginning. From the beginning. It was about people who were sentenced. Yes. Yes. They were guilty and sentenced. And God said, no, 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 no. These are my kids. Yeah. And Not doing, doing everything saying. he could possibly yes. and yes. still be just and right. righteous right. Right. to right. spare man, mm -hmm. his children. He loves you for God so loved, loved the world. <laughs> yeah. That didn't start in John. Yes, yes, yes. That yes. started from the very beginning. Yes. Yeah. So you see from the very beginning, Passover. You see the yes. blood being a result of the imprisonment or the slavery or the sin or the death. Right. Yes. The sorrow, yes. the groan, the blood, the victory. Yes. And yes. I, as, as an aside, um, it's important, I think, to know that the, why the children of Israel were enslaved. <clears throat> because the Egyptians were afraid of them. Yeah. They said, we're afraid. Began to... Multiply. Increase yeah. and get greater. They're greater than us, and yes. if they get it in their mind to take, they'll be able to take us as slaves. So they did the opposite, yes. which yes. to me is just mm -hmm. the way our enemy works at us. Yes, to yes. take to enslave us, mm -hmm. so that we don't take authority over him. Preemptive strike. Yeah. When there's no threat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's what we see a lot of in politics today. Sure. We're going to crush you and, and, and make sure that these guys have freedom. And going, who's, who's, who's oppressing them now? <laughs> well, I know you Christians. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, anyway, get off the, path, off the path there. Now let's come down to the Passover. We come out of the garden. We see mm -hmm. that blood. Right. Now we come down to this thing in the Passover. You know the story. Yes. And he says, do this thing. Put the blood kill a lamb, which would happen in Genesis, in, in the garden, put a, kill a lamb, and then on the doorpost mm -hmm. of your house, paint the blood, mm -hmm. and then that night, you roast that lamb, you bring in everybody that you can, mm -hmm. and you feed them that lamb, and pack, and you bake this unleavened bread, it won't have time to rise the dough, so, right. but, and that was a faith. Mm -hmm. 430 years, and you're telling me, we're going to be leaving fast. <laughs> yeah. Ten pl nine plagues, getting ready to have ten. He's not let us go yet. Yeah, tomorrow's the day. <laughs> right. right. And yeah. we're going to leave right. with all the goods. Yep. <laughs> so they do that. It doesn't matter. I think we've discussed this before. It didn't matter if they were good people or bad people. Yeah. Or if they were afraid or not. Right. It only mattered, did you do it? Did yep. you put... Were you under the blood? Some people will say obedience. Well, yeah, but let's be honest. It's under the blood. It's about the blood, yeah. yes. not your obedience. Yes. Right. Yes. Did you yes. apply the blood? Yeah. Your obedience yes. is, do you believe Jesus Christ is the Lord? That's your obedience. Is the blood the answer or is your obedience the mm -hmm. answer? Mm -hmm. I know some people would say it's semantics, but we tend to put the, the weight on obedience. Mm -hmm. In other words, on it's what you. People do. Right. Yeah, what people do. And it's what he did. And if you believe him, you're going, oh, this is easy. <laughs> I'm going to paint the whole house. He goes, no, just the doorpost is fine. Right. And so that night, the death angel comes, and boom, all the firstborn in the land, animals yes. and people, gone. Just the wailing, different yeah. kind of groan that night, but not from the people are gone. Yes. And the next day, it was get out of town, and the people literally threw money at them. 
yeah. just through yeah. money. Get out, get up. And it says they walked out of there and there was none feeble Evil. or sick among them. That's right. The old, the young, whoever it was, they walked out in a hurry, but they walked. Mm -hmm. They didn't run. So the Ten Commandments, where they're showing carrying the older people <clears throat> on litters, is not a true, true no, picture. No, no. Because no. the word says there were none feeble. Right. Yes. So that would tell me everybody was able to move right. under their own power to get out. Yeah. Yes. That is a big, you're, you begin to see the picture of the blood, of the restoration. We saw it in Sarah's mm, yes, story yes, way yes, 400 yes, years yes. Uh, yeah. earlier. Yeah. What happens when you believe God and the blood? Because he walked through blood. Abraham walked yes. through right. blood. Right. And the, the two animals were split in two. And God, as a smoking furnace or torch, went right through the middle of that, walked in that blood. And you see in, is it Romans or Hebrews? Hebrews, it talks about by two immutable things. It's impossible for God to lie. And then number two, he swore an oath. That was it. Yes. He swore yes. a blood yes. oath. Yes. Blood of animals. Yes. God, who can't lie, still said to Abraham, I'm going to affirm this where you'll feel comfortable. I got mm -hmm. skin in this game. Let's mm -hmm. walk through the blood. Mm -hmm. So then there's the blood. Then there's the restoration of Sarah. Mm -hmm. She gets restored yeah, where it, kings it, want her. Yeah. 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 And as I've heard other people say, kings, trust me, they're not looking at your heart. <laughs> kings don't look at a woman's heart. You're looking up here, they're looking at all. In other words, there was a work done. So now Passover, we begin to see the groan, the slavery, the groan, the, uh, the blood applied, and set free. Liberty. Walked out healed yes. and wealthy beyond yes. measure. Yes, yes, yes. And walked out into, yes. I don't know. Now, how many can identify with that today? Uh, yeah. uh, oh, I don't know. Yes. Well, what happens if God really blessed you today and you did all this? What would you do? I don't know. I'd probably breathe just for a while ago. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, be a different kind of a girl. <laughs> yeah. And there's people out there tonight that you have sick loved ones or yes. you have yes. things emotional uh, financial. Or, or financial or pressure or whatever. I don't even yes, know, yes, but yes. the pressure can be intense. The fear can be intense. That doesn't make you lacking in faith. Yeah, right, right. Doesn't make you weak believer. Right. It makes you human. Mm -hmm. But are you gonna put your trust and faith in your lack of fear or the blood? Yes. Put the blood yes. on your doorpost tonight. The blood of Jesus Christ on your doorpost. That, every time that bl lamb's blood was slain, God was looking at that animal and seeing Jesus Christ thousands yes. of years in the future. That was all about. Jesus wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't following after a pattern. Jesus was the pattern yes. from the beginning. Yes. And those lambs were the substitute yes. that held the place till he showed up. But it was all about Jesus. And as soon as he shed his blood, every lamb that had yes. been slain and, and people had believed, that blood of Jesus went back through every one of them, yes, back through did. eternity. That was the yes, blood of Jesus. Did. Yeah. Yes, it did. That's magnificent. Mm -hmm. Now, we set all that up because this is what Easter, Passover, Resurrection Sunday is about, yes. is about applying the blood of Jesus. What he did on the doorpost, let's just say that cross. Yeah. Put it on that wood, on that cross, on your heart, the yes. doorpost of your heart. Put it there. And then everything that he did, every way he spilled his blood for every way, then that blood applies to you to set you free from your sickness, from your lack and poverty, depression, despair, yes. chastised for your peace, mm -hmm. bruised for your iniquities, condemnation, striped for your healing. Yep pierced in his hands and in his feet for everything that you put your hand to will prosper in your feet. Every place you put the soles of your feet, uh, uh, you will inherit. It's like that, that curse was broken. The thorns in the head, mm -hmm. that blood trickled across here. And that, that was the Genesis account of the, the sweat across your brow. Right. You'll yes, have to yes, work and yes, earn yes. food and the ground will, will not want to produce for you. The curse is gone. Yes. All the blood went across that. Yes. The blood went across him. He was striped mm -hmm. for you. Pain was inflicted for the first time mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. on a sacrifice to God. Because all of the other sacrifices, it was lay your hands on them very cautiously, very way to do it. You do this and then pss, gone. The blood drains out. They had to be perfect, spotless, yes, sinless. Yes, yes, yes. They weren't brutalized. Until Jesus. 
They were after the after their blood had spilled, they were dead. It's appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment. Then they were cut up, mm -hmm. roasted, and they fed people. Mm -hmm. Jesus reversed it. Yes. For yes. the first time, the Lamb of God, mm -hmm. the only one capable of taking our sin Sorry. and taking our sickness mm -hmm. and taking our disease and taking everything and not imputing sin to us. It was imputed to him. He was brutalized before he died. And we celebrate that day this Friday. We call it Good Friday. But it's whenever he made the divine exchange. Everything that we have ever done, will ever do, and are doing even, Jesus paid the price for it that day in his body being mutilated and no way, they, they indicate that man couldn't even recognize who he was because of the way he was beaten. And we've seen the movies, uh, the one movie that was out. In Passion the, of the Christ. The Passion of the Christ. And, and a lot of people couldn't see that all the way through. But that man still lived. So he wasn't brutalized physically like Jesus. It wasn't an actual thing. It was a movie. But even that. I don't believe showed what Jesus Christ did for us in taking our sins and everything. Um, I think you've come up with how many things happen. I'm still working on it. Still working on it. She, a she, bunch of, a lot of. She, she, she may be writing a book on it one day. The, Trademark. The, funniest, <laughs> the things that are, are, were finished at the cross that Jesus did, that divine exchange, it's still, when I think about that, I'm still just overwhelmed at times, realizing what Jesus did and the price he paid for me. And I thank him for it. Also, you know, we come from a very um, success-oriented culture. You know, it's very important that we're successful. and. I find it very interesting, you know, the success of the cross to me is the resurrection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, that, that shows, mm -hmm. and yet, Daryl, you and I have talked about this, um, and you were making the point about the glory was in that beaten, yes. mashed, obliterated body. Yes. That's where the glory, that's where the victory was, and we're going to be doing communion in a little while. And even in 1 Corinthians, it talks about as often as you do this, Yes. You don't speak about the resurrection. You proclaim the Lord's death. Yeah. Yes. His death. His yes. death, not his resurrection. And his resurrection is important because yes. that yes. showed God received yes. the sacrifice. Yes. 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 But it was the sacrifice that was the death knell mm -hmm. to Satan and the, yes. all, and the demonic yes. realm. Yes. Yes. And so as we partake of communion, we're always proclaiming his mm -hmm. death. Yes. Here's yes. in your eye, devil, he would strike for my healing. Here's in your eye, devil, he became poor that we might be rich. You know, we can constantly beat the enemy over the head yes. because yes. we glory. Yes. Yes. Our victory was in his death. Yeah. Yes. You don't have, uh, there's no need for healing when you're dead. People say, well, you'll be healed when you die. No, nor you won't. In, or nor in heaven. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, you won't because yeah. your body stays here. Yeah, right. Your body is decayed and done. That body that was suffering the pain, you're not healed. Now, yeah. your spirit, guess what? It's not sick now. Yeah, that's right. That's what the enemy's trying that's to convince right. you. Right. Your spirit, once you receive Jesus Christ, is not sick. Yes. As yes. he yes. is, so, so are we. Yes. Now, yes. the job is is to quit listening to the liar, yes. the thief, and the murderer of yes. Satan yes. and begin yes. to enforce yes. and yes. say, flesh, listen, Jesus was brutalized in his flesh while he was alive, not for my sin. Yes. He shed his blood and died for my sin. Yeah. The brutalization, yeah. every part of this yes. physical body yes. was for this world. physical yeah. world. Yeah. Yes. yes, This is yes. why it yes. says yes. in 1 Corinthians 11, <clears throat> it says many are weak and sickly among you and mm -hmm. even go go home early yes. because you fail to discern so the, the body of Christ. And yes. We come up with these great sweeping theories, all yeah. the body of Christ out there. You don't know who your brothers are, go home. He's talking about the body yes, of the Christ. Body. Jesus yes. in his own ministry yes. said, unless you eat my yes. flesh and drink my blood, you have no part with me. Now he's not talking about cannibalism or even in my belief, 
not transubstantiation mm -hmm. when we take communion. It doesn't turn magically into his flesh. Now, if you believe that, that's okay with me. I'm not here to dispute that. Yeah. I'm just saying I'm not there. I'm not that guy. I believe it is just bread and it's just uh, the, the wine. And we take it by faith mm -hmm. right. and say, this represents what happened to my Lord yes. on that cross. Yes. As, uh, one of the scriptures says, if he's lifted up, yeah. he I will draw, draw all men. men. Now that lifting up, we're going, huh? Ah. You know, my friend used to say, I hate that song because people don't understand. Lifting cross. him up is not like, let's exalt him. It's yes. No, it's lifting him up on that cross. horrible cross. Yes. And I said, but that is our exaltation. Yes. When we lift up Jesus Christ, the cross doesn't mean much. Yes. It's the person on that cross that means yes. everything. Yes. Yes. That yes. cross that says, I already paid for your bodies. Yes. They are mine. When the resurrection happens, when the when when that thing happens, your bodies are already paid for. Yes, it's already yes. done. Yes, and the healing and all this other stuff for this realm has been provided yes. and finished yes. and available. Yeah. Amen. By the work that was finished Amen. on that cross. Yes, yes. yes. And yes. think of this: what other religion does their God have requirements, and then provide? For the thing he requires. Yes. Fulfill it. Yes. And yet, so. here's God who required a blood sacrifice. Yes. And, and then he said, I'll give my son. Yeah. I mean, I, I joke around and I say, I, when that conversation went on in heaven, because the word says he was the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, and he was talking about, well, you know, uh, we're going to have to have a blood sacrifice. And Jesus goes, that's a great idea. I'm volunteering. I'm throwing my hat in the ring. Where was that conversation going? You know, yeah. but he gave himself. This is what I want from you, but you know what? I'm going to cause myself to suffer yes. to supply what I'm requiring from you. Yes. Because when you think about it, what can flesh give to God? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, if truly a God is a God, what can we flesh mm -hmm. give to a God? If he's mm -hmm. a God, he can have or make anything he wants. So it's always funny, and, and you read about it in the Old Testament, when God would make fun about people that made idols and then worship the idols. Yeah. You make it with your hand and they and you become like them. And yeah. But he he provided yes. what he required. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just death on the cross, because there were hundreds of people that died on the cross. Yes. Right. It right. was the Lamb of God yes. that died yes. on the cross. Yes. Yes. And yes. you were talking about um, the scriptures talking about there uh, those that don't discern the body are sick. Weekly and, weak and die prematurely. And, die prematurely. and mm -hmm. um, how many times uh, maybe people take communion once a year mm -hmm. or at special high times like Christmas or Easter. That's but the good. Word say, and it is good. <laughs> it is. But the word says as oft as you mm -hmm. do it. I mean, it's great. I mean, we used to have uh, communion every Sunday at our church. We had the communion table set up that people would come and take partake of communion. But... Um, I partake of it at home. Yes, yes. If you were told today, Daily. yeah. If, if you were told today that Krispy Kreme donuts <laughs> were heart healthy and could help you lose weight, and they were they would make you live longer. You uh, would you have it every couple of times a year? No. No, no. That orange light would be on twenty four seven, and they'd be on every block. You know, every just be eating donuts every day. That's the same thing with this. The magnificent thing of this, though, is the divine exchange. It's like. Jacob, when he laid his hands on um, Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph's two sons, and he crossed mm -hmm. his hands. Wasn't that the time? Yep. He crossed his hands and he gave the blessing to the second. And he didn't curse the other, but they did. He had the firstborn the blessing. blessing to Manasseh. And, and he changed hands Ephraim. like that. It's just like God took Jesus and put his Jesus over here and crossed his hand and Jesus bore our sacrifice and our sin and our <clears throat> poverty and all of that and he put his hands on us and blessed us and did the divine exchange. Yes. Jesus took everything so we could have, he took everything of ours mm -hmm. so we could have everything of his yes. and that divine exchange I think we lose sight of so many times mm -hmm. what God did for us. I had someone speak this week to me and they were talking about their child is suffering with some pain and stuff. And it's been a while. We were mm -hmm. praying about it. We were praying over them. And, uh, 
and this woman said, if I could, if I could yes. take that pain, if I can have that pain yes. put on me oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, so that that right. child wouldn't have sure. to do it. Right. And she goes, but I, I know God doesn't do that. And I said, yeah, he does. I said, he, he took Jesus. all of that and he put it on Jesus Christ, yes, his son. Yes, he did. That's for you and your children tonight. Yes. He, put, he took that pain and put it on his son. This one, the one, one of the verses, I can't remember where it is, but I think it's somewhere in that Bible. <laughs> he who knew no, no, no sin, sin became, became sin, sin for, for us. us so that we who knew yes. no righteousness, righteousness might become the righteousness, righteousness of God, God in, in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. That's what we're talking about tonight. Yes, yes, It yes. is finished. They're not just words that make a great out. Good night. See ya. It is, it is the words that the entire gospel is yes, about. What yes, the grace yes, of God, yes. what the mercy of God about is about. It is finished. finished. And that's when he went, see ya kids. Bowed his head and said, I'm coming. And he, he dismissed his spirit like a king yes, would dismiss yes. his servant. Uh, it was regal. He was done. Yes. The work had been done. The judgment, the full fury and might of, uh, and judgment mm -hmm. on our sin, past, present, and future, was done. Yes. Paid for. Laid on him. That's stunning. Now, if you are the enemies of light, what would you spend your time doing? Making sure no one understood that. Absolutely. And I would certainly make sure that the unimportant part, the human, takes all the responsibility. My sacrifice, my, yeah, me, my me, service, me, me, me. my chastity, my whatever, how my, much, my, my. How much We're I not pray, putting any of that down. We're saying it's worthless in the terms of righteousness right. and what Jesus did on that cross. Yes. He finished it. He finished it. He finished it. He finished it. He gets all the glory. Yeah. We get none. Mm -hmm. And that resurrection, as my sister uh, said earlier, was the seal. Hey, he's accepted. Yes. Because every other yes. sacrifice in the history of the world was eaten up by the judgment. Gone. Yes. Dead. Finished. Yes. yes. This one walked out of the grave and said, is that all you got? The judgment was done. Done. The judgment was now done. Now that's for those. The judgment <laughs> is done on Christ. It's done. It's done on Christ. Yes. And when you're in Christ, your judgment's done. Yes. But those of you that have not yet put your faith in Jesus Christ and asked him to come into your heart, you're out there in a world that is still in the judgment. God's not mad at them. The world's just under the law judgment of the law. The law says if you break any part of it, mm -hmm. you're you got to pay. You're guilty of it all. Yes. That's what's going on outside of the body. They're under that still. Yeah. Well, they're not, I don't, I don't believe in God doesn't matter you're still under that law no I'm not are you prone to sickness and death yeah well then you're under that law <laughs> yeah but when you're in Christ because he's already borne yes. all of the punishment and you put that blood on your doorpost guess what I'm inside of the house of Christ I'm inside of Christ mm -hmm. and the blood's on the doorpost and that death angel can't come over me judgment is done yes so I'm, I'm trying to tell you your judgments done Christians we're gonna see a lot of stuff and it feels like sometimes, oh my God, is this judgment? No, it's just some of the puke of the world throwing up on us. But outside there in the world, you may be good men and women and God loves you, loves you, loves you. But unless you see Jesus Christ and receive him, that judgment's coming to you. It's coming to you and that's, we want you, God wants you away from that. That's why he, he brought his own son here to, to endure such things because God loves you. And Jesus loves yes. you. And we love you. Why would we bother telling, taking the time? You know, just most people just call us haters now, you know, <laughs> because we believe in a sky God and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, uh, we could go on all night, but we're going to go ahead and, and start to look at, at some communion here. And this won't take long. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have s some stuff in your house, just pause the broadcast right now and go get the elements. And then... You can join us uh, as we finish this here in just a minute.
but it's all wrapped in love. It was the love of God that sent his only begotten son, and it was the love of the only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who was willing to come. And it's all about love. That's the greatest thing. That's the greatest thing that we have to offer the world is love. And thank God we have a God who taught us yeah. to love. Thank God. And the first element of love yes. is to tell them who love is. Yes. yes. If you won't tell them about the Christ, then you don't love them. Yes. Well, we should feed them. Yeah. But if you don't feed them the Christ, he said, my flesh is blood or my, my flesh is the bread of heaven. Yes. Jesus said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And if you eat this bread, you'll never be hungry again. If you drink this blood, this fountain of life, you'll never die. And if you're not telling people about Jesus Christ and about the, how much God loves them, then you don't love them. Yeah. That's just the bottom line is, well, I feed them. That's great. You're, you're just kind of being a hospice for them, making them comfortable in their death, where they're going eternally. Feed them food, fine, but feed them the Christ too. Anyway, that's it. So we read in 1 Corinthians, or we spoke about, you can go read this uh, again with us tonight, but it's in 1 Corinthians 11, down there about uh, maybe 18 through 28, somewhere in that range. And, and uh, Paul's telling us, and he runs us through it. There towards the end, he tells us, this is in the remembrance, uh, you, you uh, remember his death. You mm -hmm. celebrate and commemorate his death. Celebrate his death. His death. Yes, I know. Sounds weird. But celebrate his death till he come. And we take time to discern the body of Christ tonight. The body that is his flesh. The body that was striped, that was ripped, that was, that was poked with thorns and nails and a spear in his side. That it was yes. flogged mercilessly with a spiked uh, whip. Just yes. ripping the flesh all the way to the bone for your sickness. That body, that tonight we remember that was for my body. Yes. That was for your body and your child's body and your mother's body and your sister's body and your, your son's body and your friend's yes. bodies. Yes. The people that you're praying for and for your, your, the, the supply and provision and the peace and the yes. broken hearts. Yes, 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 covers it all. All of it. That's what yes. we're eating tonight is the flesh. Yes. The flesh, the finished work of Jesus Christ we're commemorating on that cross. His body was broken. So we break this bread and we take this and we remember that. Amen. Amen. Healing, peace, provision, the grace of God abound to you. He's given you strength for the journey as the children of Israel were able to walk out of their captivity and out of that long standing. As he said about that woman, 18 years you've been bent over. Yes. And should not today daughter this Abraham. daughter of Abraham be, be, be set free from 18 years of bondage. Yes. Today's the day for your healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for the healing of your home, yes. the healing of your finances, the healing of your mind and your heart yes. Yes. and your relationships yes. Yes. because of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then he said, in like manner, we took this cup which represents the new covenant in his blood. Yes, yes. The old covenant was between God and the children of Israel. And it was ratified by a sprinkling of the blood, blood of the sacrifices on the children of Israel. The new covenant was ratified by the blood of Christ Jesus. Yes. And it's not between us and God. Yes. It was between God Jesus. and Jesus the Christ. A covenant by virtue of eternal priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Yes. And God Almighty, yes, who is the yes, eternal, yes. can never be broken. You cannot break this covenant because it's not between you and God. It is between him and Jesus, and we are in Christ. And so when we're in Christ, we're in this covenant. Amen. So we drink this blood Amen. to remember Jesus. that eternal life and that, that yes. sin that was in, uh, not in, imputed to us. And we're free. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank and the Jesus. wonderful thing is, he ends it on Sunday, three days later, by arising. Jesus arose. Came up out of so that place. Praise God. Praise God.
So that's what we're believing for us, for you, for the body of Christ around the world, and for our Jewish brothers and sisters around the world that are celebrating the Passover this Sunday or this weekend. I ask the Father God that the eyes of our brothers and sisters be open to yes, see yes, Jesus yes, is yes, their Messiah. Yes, that is their yes, Christ. And, yes, and we're, yes. we are accepted him. <laughs> but it's their Christ. Yes. Their Messiah. Yes. And so we pray that their eyes would be yes. open to Amen. see this Amen. and join Amen. us in this Amen. wonderful uh, communion of what he finished that was intended from, for them from the beginning. It's their Christ. Amen. So thank you for being with us today. And we believe that your family Amen. and your friends Amen. and your yes. home yes. this weekend yes. experiences that coming forth out of, the out of that tomb. Yes. And walking in newness of life because you're filled with strength for the journey. Amen. Not one feeble one among you Amen. and your family. Yes. Amen. Why not? Amen. It's going to go with somebody. <coughs> Might as well be you. Any closing thoughts? I think we said it. Amen. Thanks for joining us. And hopefully we'll see you a little sooner this next time. <laughs> and believe God. I believe Amen. God. He, he loves you. He's done it all. It is finished. Amen.